Is something special going on tonight, I guess? <laughs> anyway, doing a call to order tonight. So, uh, Renee, please show all board members except for Ms. Gilkey here tonight. And if you would, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, well tonight we have uh, several board salutes and probably always the, our favorite part of all the board meetings and I think Aaron's gonna take us through those. So. I will take um, you through all of these. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to call Isaac Bates from Charlestown Middle School forward, please. Thank you. Congratulations to Charlestown Middle School student Isaac Bates for placing 11th in the state of Indiana's Geographic B competition. The top 106 students from Geographic B competitions held among 4th through 8th graders at schools throughout the state competed in the event. The event is an education outreach program of the National Geographic B Society and is designed to inspire students to be curious about the world and encourage the love of geography. The board salutes Isaac Bates. That's pretty impressive, uh, and I'd like to just let you know, Isaac, how proud of you we are. Uh, you've done a great job representing yourself, your family, your school, and our school corporation. It's a small token of our appreciation, but on behalf of the board and our central office team, we just want to tell you how proud of you we are, and thank you for doing such a great job representing our school corporation. Congratulations. <laughs> Would Assistant Superintendent Dr. Travis Hare please come forward? He hates me for this right now. <laughs> the board salutes Assistant Superintendent Dr. Travis Hare for recently completing his doctorate degree through Indiana State University. Your hard work and commitment in completing this highest level of post-secondary education is celebrated. Your experience and in-depth training are invaluable to our district. Congratulations, Dr. Travis Hare. Would Wilson Elementary Principal Dr. April Holder please come forward? Congratulations to Wilson Elementary Principal Dr. April Holder for being selected as the Indiana Association of School Principals District 12 Principal of the Year. The organization annually recognizes outstanding school leaders in each of the 12 Indiana districts who have succeeded in providing high quality learning opportunities for students. These principals are acknowledged by their peers for exemplary contributions they have made to the profession. The program honors principals who have demonstrated excellence in leadership at the building level, district, and community level, as well as the state level. Dr. Holder will attend the IASAP conference this fall where a state principal of the year will be named. Good luck, Dr. Holder. Again, Dr. Holder, again, like several other uh, of our 
Uh, administrators in our district have worked hard to earn that level of distinction, so we're proud of her, obviously, for that. But also, it all comes down to what happens at our building level. We've got tremendous students and staff. It also requires great leadership. And I think this just shows the level and extent to which we strive to have the best leaders possible for our schools in the, the fact that it's been recognized by the Indiana Association of School Principals. This confirms the fact that we're very lucky to have you, Dr. Holt. So congratulations. <laughs> The board salutes Riverside Elementary and Utica Elementary student councils for recently being named honor councils by the Indiana Association of Student Councils. The honor council program recognizes outstanding student councils that meet all of the prescribed requirements, such as community service and coordinating student activities. This award distinguishes outstanding student councils by guiding student leaders and their advisors through a process using standard-based criteria and demonstration-based outcomes. Both student councils are recognized for their hard work, leadership in their respective school, and commitment to their school community. Please come forward when your name is read. We're gonna start with Riverside Elementary. Student council sponsor, Carrie Holder. Student council members, Abby Robertson, Jenna Burden, Corey Higdon, Ariana Williams, <laughs> Allison Holder, Derek Leinhart, Brecken Maddox, Emily Proctor, Logan Bingham, Macy Scroggins, Emmy, Emma Byrne, Emma Howell, Braden Nakata, <laughs> Michael Truax, and Daniel Hollis. That's it? Okay, first of all, <laughs> we have certificates because all of these young people deserve recognition. So if you don't mind, please distribute those. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for your leadership. I don't know if people understand just how challenging this is to receive this distinction. And the fact that we have two schools, Riverside being one of them, what an honor that is. But I'm talking to you guys right now. You are tremendous leaders for our school corporation. Thank you for the commitment that you make to help Riverside be such a special place. And we're very, very proud of all of you, okay? Utica Elementary Student Council sponsors Ashley Emily and Amber Anderson. Student Council members Lily Fondrisi, Casey Garrett, Cooper Sanders, Nolan Schultz, Noah Benningfield, Rachel Lowe, Lucas Mashburn, Victoria Alverson, Kyler Arthur, Olivia Clive, Savannah Gaither, Madeline Hyatt, Cole Phillips, Emma Barnes, Landon Gaines, Dylan Baumgartel, Emma Scott, Gage Grimes, Raylan Roofer, Tate Adams, Carly Allman, Shavonda O'Keary, Jarrett Phillips, Mason Timberlake, Scooter Stewart, and Charlie Weber. I just love having all the, uh, the space filled up here. <laughs> this is why we exist. We exist because of these young people right here. And again, like I said, our, your Riverside uh, fellow students, we're so proud of you because we know that the, this distinction, and thank you, Ms. Emily, for your leadership, but it's all about what you do to help your school become even more special, and it can't be there without your leadership. So thank you to all of you for what you've done to help Utica become even a more special place. Congratulations.
Would Colin Trinkle from Charlestown High School please come forward? The board salutes Charlestown High School student Colin Trinkle for his continued outstanding work in the school's food service department through the district's choice program. The choice program is a vocational program developed to give students greater opportunities in connection with the district's college and career readiness initiative. Some of Colin's duties include prepping food for the salad bar, creating the food display in the hallway where students enter the cafeteria, and also taking great pride in baking his most delicious chocolate chip cookies. Colin also played a major role in the Charlestown High School Iron Chef competition by being a part of the winning food service team. Aramark Food Service Director Natalie Turner is quoted as saying, Colin brings joy to the Charlestown High School kitchen. He is innovative and always exudes a high level of positivity that influences our team. The board salutes Colin Trinkle. Congratulations to Jeffersonville High School students, Jiffy Bishop, Katie Bowen, Brandon Elsner, Nick Lozier, and Alex Roberts for placing first in the 2015 Purdue University Engineering Expo. 23 schools were represented at the Expo with over 100 teams and 500 students participating. Jeffersonville High School had seven teams compete at the Expo. During the event, students participate in a variety of activities. There was an activities fair during which students had the opportunity to talk with representatives from all Purdue's engineering schools, as well as members of various engineering clubs and organizations. Students also took part in a quiz bowl event where, the, where they test their knowledge of basic engineering concepts and theories. Finally, the highlight of the day was an impromptu design competition where teams had to build a car that could travel, travel the furthest down a ramp and protect eggs from being destroyed by a crusher. The goal of the Purdue University Engineering Expo is to promote STEM career fields, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Manufacturing. The Expo is a hands-on, head-first dive into the multifaceted world of engineering. The winning students will also receive scholarship money for Purdue University. Great job, Red Devils. Great. We'd also like to recognize their teacher, Alan Sharptinko, if he could stand for a little recognition or come forward. Thank you. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I know this is taking some time, but this is the best thing that we, we do. I'll just be honest. If you notice, we're recognizing kids at all levels with all abilities, it takes a great community. Uh, we have teachers and staff members who are here filling this room 
without their dedication and commitment, then these young people don't have those kinds of opportunities to grow and develop like they have. Parents, thank you for everything that you've done, not only to make sure that all of our students in here are given the best opportunities possible, but for the support that you provide to our school corporation on a daily basis. So, uh, again, just thank you for what you do because you're, you're a quiet leader. I've been in your classroom time and time again, and you're, one, you're the best that we have to offer in Greater Clark County Schools. You do an outstanding job, and this is proof positive of what you do for our kids. So congratulations. <laughs> Last but not least, the board salutes Utica Elementary School for being one of 281 schools across the state to be named a four-star school for the 2013-14 school year by the Indiana Department of Education. In order to achieve this designation, a school must be in the top 25th percentile of schools in two I-step-based categories. Additionally, a qualifying school must have earned an A in the state's accountability system and be accredited Ooh, by the Indiana Department of Education. Indiana State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Glenda Ritz, stated, winning this award is a testament to the excellent work done by teachers, administrators, students, and parents throughout the school year. Can all of the following please stand to be recognized? Congratulations, Utica Elementary. Well, that was pretty exciting. Uh, so I'd like to open it up for any board member comments for the board salute tonight. So Mr. White. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many wonderful things happening in Greater Clark. And, and like Dr. Mellon said, from staff down to the students, I just applaud all of you and 
and amazed at all the accomplishments that you all can do. So thank you and keep up the good work. Parents, thank you for sharing these wonderful gems with us and we, we certainly appreciate all the support you give us in the school corporation because we couldn't do it without you, that's for sure. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for all your hard work and I especially want to thank that young man, Colin, because I got to be in the Iron Chef and he had some <laughs> wonderful food. So good job, Colin. <laughs> I guess I'm going to make my comment to Isaac Bates because uh, geography is my very favorite thing, and I'm so glad you like it like I do. That's just wonderful. Thank you. I think this shows we have outstanding students and staff in Greater Clark, and we're doing great things, and keep up the good work. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, very proud of all the uh, recipients tonight. Um, but as I sit here looking out over the crowd and I see the young folks here, I mean, that's what we're all about. That keeps us grounded is looking at the young folks and what they're able to achieve. And so thank you, parents, again, for the outstanding job that you're doing. And thank you, students, for everything that you're doing. You're great ambassadors to, for Greater Clark. So good, great job. Okay, we're going to move on into the agenda just a little bit, and then I'll dismiss everyone who wants to go. Um, so we're going to start out with the approval of the agenda. So do we have any uh, changes tonight to the agenda? So moved. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. White, I think. I heard. All right. All in favor? All right. B60. Thank you. Next is the approval of minutes from the previous meeting. I'd like to take all those together, executive, regular, and special. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Second. Thank you, Ms. Zoman. Any? All right. All in favor? Be 6 all. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Miller, no public comments on agenda items tonight? No, sir. Okay. Moving into the consent agenda, we have six items tonight and would like to take all of those together. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Second. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Any questions, comments on those items? If not, all in favor? B6L, thank you. Um, Dr. Mellon, I think you have an announcement to make. Yes, sir. Uh, board, you have uh, just approved uh, the new coach of the Jeffersonville High School basketball program. He is here today uh, with his family. And uh, if you don't mind, Board, I'd like to uh, have Joe just come forward. Um, like I know you'll love to do that. Come forward here, Joe, for just a second. <laughs>
Sports are important, but we've got to keep it in perspective. And I believe Joe keeps it in perspective because he's always looking for what's best for our young people. I talked to some people up in Richmond about Joe, and they told me that the students at Richmond High School have a tremendous amount of respect, and the community does as well, because of how Joe has treated students coming from all different backgrounds. This is the type of person that we're very lucky to have coming to our high school, not just as a basketball coach, but as a dean of students and as a person. So Joe, welcome aboard, thank you for being part of our family. <laughs> I know a lot of you have come for the recognitions tonight, and you certainly are welcome to stay for the meeting, but if you decide not to, uh, this would be a great time to, <laughs> to um, adjourn. Okay, we'll uh, we'll start back up again. So the next, <clears throat> excuse me, next item on the the agenda is gifts to buildings. So Ms. Perkins, would you do the honor, please? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, this month we have a total of seven thousand seven hundred and twenty-three dollars that's been given to our schools uh, from various organizations and individuals. It just absolutely amazes me every month, the amount of money that this community gives to our schools to support our students and our teachers. Um, as you can see from the list, we've got um, from the Educational Foundation, which I'm a member of, they, um, money was given, and the FOP, uh, they're great partners with our school corporation, and Clark Memorial Hospital, and just to name a few. So. Thank you very much to those that I do recommend. I move that we approve. All right, thank you, Ms. Perkins. Do I have a second? second. Thank you, Ms. Zolman. All in favor? B6O, thank you. 
Moving into the action items, first is policy 3328 transportation services contract, second reading. Ms. Lewis. Thank you and good evening. As presented for first reading a month ago, the only change in this policy is um, changing the number of routes that a bidder can be awarded from five to 15. And there have been no changes since first reading, so at this time we recommend approval of this policy. All right, thank you. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. White. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Any questions, comments for Ms. Lewis? All right, all in favor? B60, thank you. Next is the Neola Policy Series 3000, 4000, 5000. This is first reading, so no action tonight. That's correct, and if you will remember, we introduced those to you at the last meeting, and so they are um, on the Google Drive for your review, and uh, we're moving forward. The next section is six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll put all of those on, and that will complete all of the policies that we administratively have reviewed. Uh, we'll give you all the opportunity, and we're still on target for doing our approvals the first part of July. Okay, thank you. Next is property appraisals. That's correct. Um, we are in the process of getting appraisals uh, with your approval this evening using Charlie Mills with Mills Biggs Hare and Reisert of Jeffersonville and Greg McCartan with McCartan and Associates of New Albany. We want them to perform property appraisals on a couple of different parcels of land. Their prices are set out um, on your board action data sheet for your review. Um, the auto auction, 3,000, and the 70 acres in the Charleston area, $1,800 for Mr. Mills, 2,800 and 1,700 uh, for Mr. McCartan. It'll take 30 to 40 days for them to do the um, written appraisals to get that information back to us. It's essential we have that in order to move forward with any opportunities for land purchases. So we are, the superintendent is asking that you approve these two individuals who meet the criteria as appraisers uh, in accordance with state law to perform these for Greater Clark. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lewis. We have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Thank you, Ms. Zolman. Any questions, comments for Ms. Liz? It's required that we have two independent appraisals on That's any correct. land purchase. Two independent appraisals, and the recommendation is that they, even though each appraiser is appraised, you know, has gets their own credentials, uh, we decided not to go with two appraisers in one firm. Um, so that's why we have the diversity here presented this evening. But yes, we are required to have at least two appraisals. Thank you. And then a purchase of property cannot be more than the average of the two appraisers. Okay. Further questions? All right. All in favor? Be 6 0. -oh. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the bid award contract bus routes. Uh, Dr. Deichel? Yes, I just want to say I was happy when I saw the basketball coach had four children. That's $20,000 <laughs> added to our ADM. <laughs> I thought that too. Just, I just I wanted to make thing. that comment. <laughs> I saw dollar signs. <laughs> anyway, the notice of intent to negotiate for school bus transportation fleet contract routes was published on Saturday, April 11th, 2015, and Saturday, April 18th, 2015, per Indiana Code 5-3-1-2E for 15 bus routes. Proposals were opened and negotiated on April 30th, 2015. The administration would like to award the following <coughs> eight contract bus routes, but we're going to change that to seven. I'm going to pull one. Route 55 or bus 7C, daily rate 245 to William Rex Davidson. Route 58 or 10C, daily rate 225 to Rebecca Zimmerman. Route 57, 9C, daily rate 220 to Sharon Johnson. Route 60, 12C, daily rate 268 to T. Charles Gregory. Route 84, 5W will be pulled. We'll renegotiate and come back at a later time. Uh, route 87, which is 8W, daily rate 235, Sherry Woods. Route 89, 10W, daily rate 200. And that's only a one-year contract. The rest of these are four-year contracts. She only wanted a one-year contract. Mm -hmm. She figures she's getting ready to retire and she'll go one more year. So that's the only exception to the four-year rule. Route 92, 13W, daily rate $250 to Teresa Eve Bergen. Uh, you have a complete list of all of them attached 
in your uh, packet there. We only had one proposal for the Jefferson Route student transit and we rejected all of their bids due to the high price and you can see them as follows. Anywhere from a low of 279 to a high of $336. So we're asking permission to approve these as submitted. All right, thank you, Dr. Nigel. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve. All right. Thank you. Second. And thank you, Ms. Zolman. Any questions, comments for Dr. Deichel? Okay, so we'll be approving this with Route 5W pulled then, right? Correct. Okay, all right. Okay, all in favor? B60, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is the Scott County Economic Development Corporation Adult Ed and HSE Agreement. And uh, Dr. Hare. Dr. Hare. I, was, I keep wanting to say Mr. Hare, but I got to say Dr. It's all, now, it's so. all good. It's all good. Thanks, Mr. Pavey Board. Uh, this is the agreement. Uh, it's, it's, it's very similar to the one that we brought forth last year with the Scott County Economic Development. Uh, they manage these funds for the workforce development, and uh, this. Uh, this agreement offsets part of our high school equivalency. That is the, uh, the new term for the GED. This offsets the GED instructor's salary. They have agreed to pay about half. Last year they paid us $30,000. They agreed to a 5% increase. So they will be uh, giving us uh, $31,500 to offset uh, the instructor's salary. Sandy Lewis has reviewed uh, the contract. Thank you, Dr. Hare. We have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions, comments for Dr. Hare? All right. All in favor? B60. Thank you. Next is the LPFM station construction agreement, Charlestown Jeffersonville High Schools. Uh, yes, sir. In order to achieve the successful installation of the antennas, and all of the related uh, infra uh, equipment with the radio stations at Charlestown and Jefferson High School. Uh, the, we are recommending the approval for this agreement with FM Expansions Group. Uh, the agreement will allow this vendor to obtain, configure, and install the equipment for the radio station. The total amount for these services is $59,904.60. Ms. Lewis has, re has reviewed the agreement, so has Dr. Deichel. Um, there is a portion here where we put $35,000 up front to help pay for the equipment. And I would uh, let the board know that this is under budget from what we presented mm -hmm. uh, when we presented this to you uh, about a month ago. All right. Thank you. Like that motion. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. <coughs> Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins, I think. Thank you. All right. Questions, comments? I like under budget. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> And, and I just, I had one question is, how long does this go, how long does this support actually last? Um, um, you know, this has been the gentleman that we've been talking to, uh, Dr. Mellon, you're going to tell me, you initiated several months, he's been the engineer that has helped us walk through this. Um, he actually comes in from Oklahoma, has been in several times already, uh, and then has provided this. So we will, uh, he's been very supportive of what we're going to do. I, I know that's not a definitive answer mm -hmm. with the date, but I, he's definitely going to, he's invested in so, so down the road, if we're having technical issues, then Absolutely. he would still be on call. Okay, very good. All right, further questions? All in favor? B60, thank you. Next is the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, the 2015-16 version. Uh, yes, Board, each year we bring forth the uh, uh, Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. Um, really not a lot of changes this year. Uh, we did add a section on um, restraint and seclusion. Uh, Ms. Schneff helped us write that as part of some programs that she has. And uh, board, that is in the, the document that you receive. I would ask that for one additional change, <clears throat> excuse me, that is not in there, um, meeting with some of our assistant principals. Uh, there is the terminology in there as far as um, offenses that students could commit. And the, the term in there is um, there's a fight and there's an assault but there's not battery. And in talking with some of our assistant principals, they feel like we need to add that term. So we'll just add the term battery and put the um, uh, legal definition And Ms. Lewis has agreed to help me with that. So uh, those would be the two <coughs> changes, not huge changes, very minor changes, the, in, the addition of uh, both of those definitions. Okay, thanks. 
So, so moved. moved. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hall. And thank you, Ms. Zolman. Any questions, comments for Dr. Yeah. Hare? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hare, if you're looking at change, when I was reading through this the other day, when it talks about notific parent notification, we still have that terminology, a phone call and letter. And I think it's time, probably an email is more valuable and it's a little greener, especially greener than a letter. So maybe it's time to update that with, instead of a letter, an email. And I think that's a good suggestion. I'm gonna look, Ms. Lewis, we'll need to do a little bit of research. There are a few times that we have to send like yes. a certified letter mm -hmm. so that people will sign so we know we've got it. I think it's an excellent suggestion and we'll look into it. And if we can do that, we will certainly do that as much as possible. Okay. It's a good suggestion. Further questions, comments? Just makes me sad that we have to add battery. Just mm -hmm. sign the times, I guess. Yeah. All right, all in favor? B60, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is the school age child care provider. And let's see, Dr. Hartledge will walk us through that. Yes. Um, the Indiana Code requires school corporations to provide opportunities for nonprofit organizations to offer a latchkey program every year in the school facilities. And by Indiana Code and Policies, we issued a request for proposals on March 1st. We had two organizations in our community respond, the YMCA of Southern Indiana and Communities and Schools of Clark County. We had a committee made up of three principals, and Amy Schellenberg, our Executive Director of Curriculum Instruction, reviewed the two proposals very closely. Both of the proposals were very similar in adult-child ratio, cost of services to parents, and description of how services would be provided. The committee unanimously endorsed the communities and schools. Um, they have several services, wraparound services, already in our buildings, and the extended learning um, day complements those services already. Um, some of those <coughs> provided services are um, resource coordinators in school therapy and counseling. Um, they have a 321 read program. Um, they also help to provide um, vision screenings for our first graders and um, several other opportunities that have been a very strong partnership for us. So the after school program will also be a complement to all of those other programs as well as our regular educational programming. Um, that also required that there would be evaluation data to support their proposal. So we um, would like to award that to communities and schools. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Harledge. Do we have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. White. Second. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Any questions, comments for Dr. Hartledge? Seems like it's been a good partnerships in the in the past. So, all right. All in favor? B six zero. Thank you. Next is the elementary 2015-2016 student handbooks. Um, each year we very carefully review our school handbooks for the elementary schools and we revise those to reflect current policies or changes in the law um, to be able to provide clear communication to our parents and copies of the yearbook um, have been attached for you to review. Um, they will be updated also with the, the new students' rights and responsibilities that Dr. Hare presented and um, we would like for you to approve these. Thank you, Dr. Hartledge. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Second. Thank you, Ms. Zolman. Questions, comments for Dr. Hartledge? Yeah, when I was looking through there, uh, through these, I noticed a lot of the mission and vision statements were all, were different than the corporation. And, and you would think that everybody would be on the same page, would have the same mission, the same vision. And uh, some of the schools didn't have either listed, but maybe that's something in the future I'm sure they're all good. They were all great, worded, outstanding, but maybe uh, maybe consolidation or uh, everybody get on the same page could be looked at in the future. And that's a very good point. Many of those were um, drafted through their school improvement planning committees and in the, the research and work that goes as they um, 
interview and include different members of the community and each school individually then utilizes that information to draft these mission and vision statements based on the data and their goals um, but that is certainly something that we can take into consideration okay, okay. further comments all in favor b60 thank you bringing us money this time, huh? Duke Energy's Remedial Reading Initiative Grant? Yes, we are very fortunate here in our community um, to have a, a very strong partnership with Duke Energy, and um, they made me aware of an opportunity to um, pursue this grant, and um, this allows us to provide additional summer remediation for 28 um, students of high need, high risk students at Spring Hill Elementary, their incoming second and third graders. The program is designed to help the children um, become better prepared to start school in August. And um, it allows us to hire two additional teachers and four paraprofessionals to run a 10 day program for three hours each day. It would consist of whole group, small group instruction specifically in the area of literacy. <coughs> and um, then there will be a celebration at the end. Goals will be set and we are accountable um, for the progress that is made. Um, also, as part of this, we've included um, special job descriptions with parameters that were outlined by Duke Energy, and we would like for you to um, approve those as well as part of this grant. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion? Solman. Thank you, Ms. Solman. Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions, comments for Dr. Hartledge? This is, this is, <clears throat> this is showing my age again. I do that a lot, don't I? <laughs> Um, do we ever thank? Do we ever send thank you notes? Mm -hmm. We need to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. We're, yes, we that's do. Such a need, and we really. Yeah. And we actually, they uh, work very closely with us in our college and career readiness mm -hmm. initiative, and other opportunities that they've provided. So I know Dr. Mellon meets regularly, and um, we certainly have an opportunity to show our gratitude to them. Maybe. Maybe the children who participate in the thank you notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good idea. Further questions? All right. All in favor? B60. Thank you. All right. Next item is the Salome. I hope I don't mess this up. Salome Thomas, keynote speaker for Corporation Opening Day. Yes, I am very, very excited um, that we have this opportunity. <coughs> Principal L, um, I had the opportunity to hear him with a team of teachers um, that traveled to a conference out in Las Vegas. He is an extraordinary um, person who has just an amazing ability to motivate and inspire us to work even harder for what is closest to our heart, and that is the children that we work with. Um, he has been nationally recognized. He is, um, was a teacher and principal with the Philadelphia School District for several years. Um, he, has, uh, he came into education from uh, the professional athletic world and stayed. Um, he's authored several books that have been on Oprah, Dr. Oz. He's um, featured in several different news programs. And his whole theme is every child deserves a champion. And um, so we're very excited to bring him um, to our district to really touch on um, how to work with children of poverty and cultural competency and building relationships, with it, which has been a huge part of our pride initiative. So um, we would like for you to approve a contract to bring him here to inspire all of our teachers and staff on opening day. All right, thank you. Do we have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Second. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Any questions, comments? I'm very excited about mm -hmm. this opportunity for our teachers. And, mm -hmm. um, it, I've, I've not actually heard him in person, but I've heard him and read some of his work, and I, I think he's outstanding. So mm -hmm. kudos. He is. For getting I'm here. excited. All right, all in favor? B60, thank you. 
Next is the e-learning summer conference spotlight speaker. I think this no. is our last contract that we'll be adding. Um, the conference is coming together great. We have over 100 sessions. Um, Tom Whitby is the, uh, the presenter that we're adding um, a contract with tonight. Um, he's a contributor <coughs> to Edutopia, really focuses on developing professional learning uh, networks through mm -hmm. Twitter. So. Okay, thank you. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hall. You have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Questions, comments? All right, all in favor? Be 6 0, thank, thank you. All right, next is the facility plan presentation. Dr. Mellon? Board, normally I, I stay seated, but for this uh, presentation, I thought I'd come this way so I could actually look in your direction. Uh, plus, makes it a little bit easier to see uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you could advance to the next slide. I, I guess, first of all, it's important to note that this recommendation that I'll be bringing forward to you tonight is really a recommendation that comes from our executive team along with Colbert Hawkins Architects and Jamie Lake is here and Jamie Lake has been an invaluable asset to us through this process um, and we really had an objective of making sure that we looked at equitable facilities that benefit our entire community our students staff parents etc now everything I'm going to say to you tonight board is subject to your input, your feedback. Uh, without your authorization, uh, we can't really move forward on this. Uh, the study, Colbert Hawkins, if you remember, we began with a contract with Colbert Hawkins July 23rd of 2013. That study was completed January 31st of 2014. So this was an extremely comprehensive study that really looked at every single building that we have in our school corporation. And if I could just pause for a second, I think it's important to note that as you saw tonight, we have tremendous things happening in our schools. We've got great programs, we've got great students, staff, parents, etc. I'm so proud of where we are heading, the direction we're moving in, the support that you've provided to us has been invaluable. But the one thing that has rested sort of on the back of my brain for some time has been our facilities. And it really started when I first came into the school corporation and started visiting all of our schools. And I noticed that the main concern I had, not being the professional expert, was that the age of the facilities was concerning to me. Now, let me stop there because our maintenance and custodial staffs have done a tremendous job of maintaining our facilities and we get the best out of our facilities we can possibly get however our students and staff and parents and community deserve better facilities and so it's time for us to move forward and that's why we're doing this tonight you will remember that Jamie was kind enough to present the comprehensive study that focused on an enrollment forecast and if you remember we were not talking about substantial growth immediately, but just sort of a steady growth over the next 10 years. Now what happens with all of the re commercial development that's occurring, uh, the assumption would be that at some point in time, it may go from steady growth to substantial growth. So we were having to really look at how do we balance enrollment forecast over the next 10 years. The conditions report, which was part of what Jamie presented, really started to lay the groundwork of some major concerns. And we focused on three major areas. First of all, student safety. We've got to make sure the buildings are safe. We have to make sure that they're a healthy environment, not just for students, but for staff as well. And we may have to make sure that we're providing a learning environment that's going to really be beneficial to our students and to our staff. So I appreciate Jamie's work in breaking down the study. As we looked at it, we saw three main projects. The first was our middle schools, predominantly River Valley and Charlestown. There are issues there related to safety. They're both open concept schools. Even though we've worked hard to have a secure environment at the front entrance, <coughs> once a person gets through that first security barrier, a, a person could go anywhere in those buildings at any point if they were striving to do harm. There are no doors, there are very few walls, 
that's an area in this day and age we need to address. Student learning is also impacted. I've spent a lot of time in those buildings. We have people all over our district who have to go there every day. And it's amazing how they overcome just the distraction that can be heard. If I'm sitting in one classroom, I could potentially hear numerous other teachers or students trying to talk and speak, et cetera. So that's very much of a concern at both Charlestown Middle and River Valley. We also have to take a hard look at Charlestown, not just from the middle school perspective, but from the future growth perspective. As you remember, the enrollment forecast talked about the fact there'd be a lot of growth occurring from northern Jeffersonville to Charlestown. And we've already seen that happening. And developers are currently entering into potential agreements to build more additions in that area. We believe that there's going to be a need to have an elementary that's strategically placed in that vicinity. I'll go into more details in a minute. In the third project, uh, in, oh, pardon me, and also in Charlestown, there's an infrastructure concern really with both facilities that both Pleasant Ridge and Jonathan Jennings. There are issues and concerns of maintenance to try to make sure that, for example, there are no leaks in the roofs and other kinds of things that are of major concern. In Jeffersonville, with the plan I'll provide to you here in a minute, there are safety issues at our facilities. There are health issues, because mainly again with the age of the facilities. We have future growth issues, especially on the north side of Jeffersonville and then those current facility infrastructure issues. Middle schools, I've already mentioned, both River Valley and Charlestown. Again, we want to renovate to eliminate the open concept. This will improve safety and learning. To me, this is priority number one in terms of the projects. At Charlestown Elementary, we're proposing to build a new elementary in the Highway 403 area. It would require us to acquire property board you have approved an appraisal of a piece of property off of 403 between Bethany and Salem Noble. It's 70 acres. It's more than enough to build an elementary, but also allows for future expansion to build other facilities if we need it. Now, this would, after a lot of debate and consideration, the building that we believe would need to be closed because of the status of the building. If you look at the physical plant, Pleasant Ridge, <coughs> even though it's a newer building, it's in poorer shape than Jonathan Jennings. So I know people in Charlestown may question that, but based upon the comprehensive study, uh, there's a lot of detail that would dictate that if we had to make a choice, it would be Pleasant Ridge that would close. There would Another issue that at least we need to consider is when they built uh, and renovated Charlestown High School, it's on 59, just under 60 acres of land. The, uh, the recommended acreage for a high school is 75 to 100 acres. So we're well under uh, the recommended acreage. So what happens is we're very landlocked from an athletic uh, facility perspective. If there's future growth at Charlestown High School, it would occur between the, the, the building and the football stadium. There's a practice field of sorts that exists there currently. That would have to go somewhere else. We have tennis courts that are in need of major repair. They're in an area where uh, they can actually take on too much water, so the tennis courts need to be relocated. There's no soccer field in Charlestown, so that one football field has to accommodate the soccer, any soccer that's going on as well. So it could provide that property where Pleasant Ridge currently exists could provide eight acres of potential athletic facility acreage, which our desire in Charlestown is to have that be a jewel and to help draw the 18,000 workers that are gonna be coming in from all over the country. That has to be a legitimate option for those families. We need to have that ability to make sure that it's a true comprehensive program at Charlestown High School. In Jeffersonville, we need to renovate Parkview, turn it into an elementary school. We would close Maple Elementary and we'd use Bridgepoint for alternative education. 
at North Haven. We'd renovate to eliminate the open concept. That's a safety concern. We'd expand it to accommodate Spring Hill, and Spring Hill would close. Wilson, we would build a brand new elementary on the current property. There's enough land to do it. Once we would build that new building, then we would be able to tear the old facility down for parking, for bus and car access, et cetera. We would close Thomas Jefferson. We'd build a new middle school. We'd acquire land on the north side of Jeffersonville, east of 10th Street. This is designed to accommodate future growth. All the growth is coming northern Jeffersonville and Charlestown. We believe that the middle school needs to be further toward this administration building. There's plenty of land right around this area. We could easily build a new middle school for Jeffersonville. Parkview, Riverside, and Utica students would therefore attend this new middle school. So you'd have three elementary schools on the east side of 10th Street, all moving and transitioning students to the new middle school that would be east of 10th Street. And the note is on the other side of 10th Street, because that seems to be a natural divider, then you'd have Parkwood, North Haven, and Wilson that would attend River Valley. Currently, board, we have students at Utica, North Haven, and Wilson. Some of those students attend River Valley. Some of those students attend Parkview. That divides friends. That divides families. We don't want that to be the case. We want it to be very clean. So project summary. We convert Parkview that is located on 12 acres of land. A middle school recommended uh, acreage is 30 acres. Parkview is landlocked. And anyone who's lived around here knows that. A recommended acreage for an elementary school is 10 to 15 acres. Parkview would be a perfect fit. It also would accommodate students from Maple. Maple is 3,300 feet from Parkview. All Maple students who leave as fifth graders, they move on to Parkview. So it's a natural fit for Maple students. Uh, North Haven would be converted to a 650 to 750 student elementary, as would Parkview. And as you can see, River Valley in Charlestown would be renovated to eliminate the open concept. So we'd be renovating four buildings. We'd build three new buildings, a new Wilson, now, whether Wilson keeps that name or there's a choice to name it something else, that would be up to you board and maybe community input. But the reality is we need, we have the land to build right on the current Wilson property. The new Jefferson Middle School would be built for 900 to 1,000 students and that would be similar in size to our current River Valley. And then the new Charlestown Elementary would be built for 650 to 750 students. All right, so again, Close, that is a word that can strike a lot of emotions in people. And I get it and I understand it, but I am telling you that the recommendation that I, we bring forward to you comes with deep thought and great sincerity. We love our students at all these schools. It's not about the students. It's not about the staff. It's not about the parents. All of these facilities, Maple Spring Hill and Thomas Jefferson in particular, are three of the buildings that the facility study showed are in greatest need of major renovation or replacement. All three of those buildings, Maple and Spring Hill are our two smallest elementaries. 190 students at Spring Hill, 240 at Maple. We feel that Maple students and Bridgepoint students can go to Parkview we can still maintain a presence that is as close to downtown as possible. In board, I can guarantee that our team has looked at every possible and conceivable location for an elementary student in that vicinity, and there are no options. This whole project has taken an extra six to eight months because we could not locate the right fit. Fortunately, we started to really think hard about Parkview and it started to make more sense the more time and attention we gave it. We think it makes perfect sense moving forward. Spring Hill students move forward to North Haven. 
North Haven is a great location. There's plenty of land. We can expand, um, and we feel very good about that location. <coughs> Thomas Jefferson, it's landlocked. What a great school. All of these schools are great schools. Again, it's not about the people. It's about the facility. Our students and staff in these buildings deserve better. They overcome their facilities every day. I've seen it. They don't complain. They don't whine. They don't moan. I'm proud of all of our people. They deserve better. We don't have equitable facilities in the school corporation, and that is what we're striving for. Bridgepoint becomes an alternative school. Currently, our alternative programs are located in at least three different buildings. Court and Porter, downtown, which is one of the best um, programs of its kind in the state. Its facility is not sufficient. Clark County Middle High, probably becoming one of the finest of its kind in the state. We can only accommodate less than 100 students there. It all is 6th through 12th grade students. We need to do something to expand an opportunity to provide an alternative form of education for elementary students. And we need a bit bigger facility. So what this would do would be allow us to transition our alternative programs out of Child Place, Clark County Middle High, Cordon Porter, and move all of our alternative programs to Bridgepoint Elementary. It has a gymnasium. It has plenty of rooms. It would be an outstanding place. So the bridge point would still be utilized, but in an alternative setting. I've also talked about Pleasant Ridge. Now, I have here moved students to new elementary, but there'd have to be some discussion board because we really have to look at how Charlestown is currently being district, and that's another big part of this conversation. We have to look at a redistricting of our entire district. As population continues to move further north, we would have to look at our current boundaries. That would impact New Washington, Charlestown, and Jeffersonville. So part of this overall plan is to be thinking as we have to shift some population around. By the way, everyone's shifting to a far better facility. No one is shifting from an old building to another old building. We're giving everybody a newer educational environment that's safer, that's healthier, and better for student learning. Other consideration, Parkwood. Parkwood is also in need of attention. <coughs> we have land over at Parkwood. One day, that is something that needs to be considered. Parkwood is our largest elementary. It's getting to capacity. At some point, we will have to address it. But in terms of priorities and potential cost factors, we have to draw the line somewhere. And that's our recommendation is that we keep it under other considerations. Now, Jonathan Jennings, as I mentioned, I know the Charlestown folks, Jonathan Jennings needs attention. So it is something we need to keep on our radar screen. It's something that we can get more community input and feedback regarding. We've made the decision based upon cost factors being sensitive to our taxpayers but also looking at the physical aspect of those two facilities. If we had to make a priority, if we had to choose, that's why we made that choice. Jeffersonville High School, people say, wait a minute, why Jeffersonville High School? Five years ago, almost $100 million was invested in Jeffersonville High School, Charlestown High School, and New Washington Middle High. So why in the world? Well, 200,000 square feet of Jeffersonville High School were never touched in that renovation five years ago. Everything from the gymnasium to the fine arts wing to the technical areas, the swimming pool, nothing was touched. That's 200,000 square feet. Now, I'm not here to say that that takes a higher priority than the other things, but it needs to be considered. We need to be thinking about what do we need to do relative to those areas. Riverside, Utica, Charlestown High School, New Washington Elementary and New Washington Middle High, according to our facility study, are in good shape. There's no need for immediate action to those facilities. That doesn't mean that we can, don't continue to pay attention, continue to properly maintain, but I'm saying in the uh, era of, of trying to prioritize, there's no need for immediate action to those facilities. 
What's the rationale for 650 to 750 student elementary schools? People will say, wait a minute, that's big. I mean, are you gonna move my kids? I'm a Maple parent, I have 240 kids in my building and now they're gonna go to some place that could be almost three times the size? Why would we do that? The average size of an elementary school, average size in the state of Indiana is 580. The only part elementary that comes close to that in our whole district out of 12 elementaries is Parkwood at 570. Equitable facilities for all. We need to be able to provide environments to be able to better differentiate instruction to meet student needs. When you have two section elementaries, it really inhibits your ability to provide a level of differentiation. You don't have the resources to be able to differentiate to the same level as those schools that have four or more sections. So again, what's a section? At Maple Elementary, for example, they have maybe two first grade classrooms. That's two sections. What happens at Spring Hill? 190 students at Spring Hill. Three what are called split sections. Split sections are when a teacher is teaching a classroom with multiple grade levels in the same classroom. At Spring Hill, we have outstanding teachers and we have great kids and I've been there and I've seen it. It's just not fair that you have uh, first and second graders or second and third graders or third and fourth graders in the same classroom. It's not fair. We've got to, we've got to do something better. So we need to look at a facility that can not only accommodate that, but also has room for growth because we have a lot more potential growth coming into our area. And we better, if we're gonna renovate or build new, we better count on how do we accommodate for growth. English language learner, special education and preschool programs in each school, allowing students to attend their home school, currently in our district. We don't have ELL programs in every building. We can't afford it. We have kids that we bus from certain environments to other from certain homeschool environments to other environments because they need some ELL attention or they need special education attention. Now I'm talking special education in terms of severe education or emotionally disabled students. We can't afford to have those programs in every single elementary school, so what do we need to do? We need to bus kids. We bus kids from Jeffersonville up to Charlestown to Pleasant Ridge in a special education environment because all of our Jeffersonville ED classrooms are full. That's not fair. It's not fair to our kids. They deserve better. It's not fair to our staff. Preschools, thanks to Mrs. Schneff and our team, we're gonna have a preschool in every elementary next year. Well, that requires room. Those rooms should be specially equipped. There should be bathrooms, for example, in every room. That may not be the case because of our older facilities. We need to be thinking ahead. Preschool education, providing opportunities for all four-year-olds eventually to have a half-day program, that's our goal. It's in our strategic plan. We need to make sure that we provide that opportunity in every building and those facilities are fair to all kids. All right, cost factors. And again, I appreciate Jamie and his team but here's what we're roughly talking about. River Valley would be about a $10 million cost. Charlestown would be eight, Charlestown Middle. Charlestown Elementary, a brand new, is about 17 million. In Jeffersonville, Parkview and North Haven would be about eight each. Wilson, brand new, would be 17. A new middle school would be 27. That's a subtotal of $95 million. Soft costs, and this is high, 25% may be a bit high, but I'd rather at this point present something that's a little bit higher figure and then back it back down. But that's about 24 million. Now those are, that's furniture. If we're gonna do these, do it right, we need to make sure that the facilities have the proper furniture. There's also financing costs and there are other fees associated with bonding. And so that would be no more than 24 million. So you have a total cost and this is just an estimate at this point of 119 million. Keep in mind, five years ago, $100 million almost was spent to renovate three high schools. And we're talking seven buildings. Now, seven buildings. 
Board, this is a lot for you to take in. It's a lot for the community. This has been a 20-month period of time for us. We have breathed, we have tried to sleep for 20 months knowing that we needed to do something. I am frankly relieved at this point to be able to finally bring out to you and to our public what 20 months of hard work has resulted in. But this is not etched in stone board. We need your input. We need your feedback. We need to get community leader meetings going. We need community group presentations. Luckily, uh, the, the best assistant I could ever ask for, Ms., uh, Mrs. Markowski here, I today asked her to set me up to get to every building as fast as possible to talk to our staffs. I'm also going to set up every possible meeting I can. I will go anywhere I need to go at any time I need to go there. And my wife and my family, who was here earlier, she may not see a lot of me for the next six months. And that's why she's very special to put up with me. But I will do everything in my power with your authorization to be the greatest ambassador I can to, to sell the story. We're not doing this to hurt anybody. We're doing this to help everybody. That's our goal. So tonight, this is the initial recommendation. I'd like to come back to you in two weeks to get your input and feedback. I would like to begin doing community meetings as soon as tomorrow, <laughs> meet with our staff and our community we would be working toward a possible 1028 hearing. Now that is the hearing in which we have to come to you and say, or board, you would have to authorize a specific plan. This is what the plan is. This is the cost of that plan. Here are the tax implications of the plan. That all has to be finalized by the end of June in order to go to referendum in November. That is the plan based upon our recommendation that recommendation coming from our team, coming from Colbert Hawkins, to you tonight. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Could uh, are we going to get a copy of this tonight or email tomorrow? Or yes. Okay. What, one of the things that we wanted to make sure of is uh, really up to about 4:30 this afternoon. I was still working. Um, on a lot of the information that was presented here from a cost factor perspective. And, uh, but yes, we'll provide it on our website. In fact, this has been live streamed uh, tonight for people who wanted to watch. Um, Daniel, who's the best videographer in Southern Indiana, at least, um, he'll be providing a copy of this eventually on our website. So it'll be available for everyone to look at and to have comment, make, be able to eventually make comment on the whole project moving forward. Yeah, and Dr. Mellon, I appreciate hearing from you and your team. At the top of the list was student safety and educational values, and and I think um, tough, you've made tough decisions, and uh, there's no easy way out to do things the right way. Uh, appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. You're welcome. Further comments? Yeah, I mean, absolutely a lot of work, a lot of good work's gone into this. Absolutely understand the need. Um, it's a lot for us to digest, so um, we'll appreciate getting the presentations as soon as possible and let us begin, I guess, mulling over it and asking questions and getting public support, and hopefully we'll be ready to talk more about it in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll plan on, it'll be on the front burner uh, and board again. I need to thank, uh, without my team here, there's no way that this work gets done. So I'm a very lucky person to have the quality that's over here to my left. And I have to thank Jamie Lake and his team at Colbert Hawkins because it's been a long process and we're not done. We have a lot more work to do, at least I hope so. And so, uh, but without all their help, we couldn't have been to this point tonight. So thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Mellon. All right, next item is reports, request. Any from the board tonight? Or reports or requests? None, thank you. All right, Ms. Perkins. 
thank you. Ms. Zoman? No, thank you. Ms. Kraft? No, thank you. Mr. Hall? No, thank you. All right. Dr. Mellon, we have no public comments on non-agenda items tonight? Not tonight, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll finish it out with board comments. So, Mr. White? Well, I'm anxious to get that PowerPoint, too, and really get into that. I mean, as you study all that, I'm a, I'm a couple slides behind you most of the time thinking about what you just said. <laughs> so I'm anxious to do that. But I also want to bring up uh, Parkview. Uh, I had the good fortune to go with my wife and see their play they put on two weeks ago, Lion King Jr. And I just want to compliment the staff there, Kenesha Zell and Nick Scroggins and Amy Hasselbring. For a middle school production, you should have seen it. It was excellent. They're, they just, their costuming, their acting, the music, it was really good, and, and I would encourage you all to go to some of those things. You'd be surprised. So thank you all for coming. Okay. Ms. Perkins? Well, um, I'd like to thank Dr. Mellon and his team for keeping us, um, you know, 20 months ago when we got that, that monstrosity from Jamie. Hold it up, Jamie. Yes. Hold it up. Yeah. And we went through it every page, um, not not for other for any reason but to provide information to this board and um my eyes were opened and i certainly appreciate i'm i love data and i've had enough <laughs> no <laughs> no it's it's been it's been a, an interesting journey and i appreciate all the information that you've provided us as a board okay zoma as a new board member, I'm learning a whole lot each day, but my number one goal of being on this board is to serve the kids and what they need. Mm -hmm. And our children are our future, and we have to every day build for them so that their life will be better. So I'm excited with what Dr. Mellon has said. I know it's a lot of money, and of course I'm a Oh, country girl and don't know a lot about high finances, but our kids need this. It's their future. So that's my number one reason for being on this board is the kids. Ms. Kraft? How do I follow that? That's <laughs> good. Very well said. <clears throat> I just thought uh, we had a great representation tonight of kids that excel and in many ways, just amazing how many ways. And those faces, that's the best part of the whole board. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't appreciate y'all out there, but it's the little people. <laughs> so that's it. Mr. Hall. Um, you know, f growth is never easy. And I'm a uh, citizen of Greater Clark, lifelong citizen. The elementary school I went to is not there no more. The middle school I went to in Charlestown's not there no more. It was junior high then. The high school I went to is not there no more. <laughs> but is Charlestown better off? You betcha. Because growth is needed. Growth came. Uh, the school I taught at for 28 years is not there no more. But I give anything. I finished my career in that new building, and it was the best couple years of my life. So. These are very tough decisions. Is, is Dr. Mellon, are we going to get everything we want? Probably not. But hopefully, like every, everyone says, it's for the kids and it's for education. And, uh, and we got to bite the bullet and do the right thing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Well, Dr. Mellon, to you and your staff, again, I appreciate the passion that you put into this. I mean, I, this obviously is going to be a a tough go. The work's just now beginning, so I appreciate all that you put into it and, and what you will put into it, and I want to thank your wife in advance for uh, what she's getting <laughs> ready to go through, but uh, I mean, I think the point that you made, and I don't know what the final, you know, look is going to look like, but, you know, what sort of resonated with me is the fact that no student moves into a lesser school, and uh, I think that's important for us to keep our eyes on. I think you made some really good points about how making the bigger schools will benefit students, and that's all the stuff we have to take into consideration as we think through this and read through this and analyze it. So, again, thanks for preparing us, um, and we've got some work to do, no doubt. So, thank you. You're welcome.
If I could just say one thing, board, too, about referendums. There were a lot of them that passed last night around the state. I know locally one didn't, but a lot of them did around the state. So this is not an overwhelming task that can't lead to success. It's happening in this state. It happened last night in many communities, and we can make that happen here, too. All right. Thank you. Last item is the adjournment. Do I have a? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Do I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Zolman. All in favor? All right. Good night.